So that is the motor successfully out and I'm going to make a separate video replacing the interior cable on that and we'll, we'll do that in the next video. Cheers. Greetings YouTube, it's Monday and this, uh, the, the supposedly 3 kilowatt motor, I'm saying it that way because I bought it second hand off Facebook and it may be just a 1500 watt. Uh, so that's the motor that's just come out of the turbine because the wire needs fixing. I've taken the liberty of uh, removing the screws and also the bolts that hold the chain wheel on that links to the chain that's driven by the drive shaft. Uh, that, in comparison, is a one kilowatt motor and you can see that there is a difference in the thickness of the rim, i.e. the size of the magnets. Uh, this motor, uh, geared up correctly, has made over three kilowatts and that was just a one kilowatt motor that's probably 10 years old, maybe older. Uh, that's a 20 tooth sprocket, I think, and that's an 18. This sprocket, though, it's got some gnarliness on it after the chain's come off a few times. And this one looks in better condition overall. So uh, there is quite a weight comparison as well. That, that one is over 10 kilos, and I say that one feels about 7 or 6, 7 or 8 probably actually. But there's the size difference. The spindle on this one, on the supposed 3 kilowatt one, is thicker. That's like a 14 and that's like a 12. And also the cable on this one comes out straight direct through the spindle. Whereas on this one it comes out of a hole in the side which you'll see because I've got to take this apart to repair it. But yeah, that's that's basically the size difference for the two motors. This one perfectly usable though. Especially when uh, it's in a quite high gear, we send it in. So yeah, we'll crack on and got to take this one apart. But like I say, I've done the hard work removing the screw as well. I'll say that. We'll see, won't we? So here's the motor, and <clears throat> I did use some of that gasket gasket paste in there. I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to get off. We'll see. First, I've got to. First I have to give the gear cog a tap and that'll come loose. Mm, I don't see why it's stuck on so, so hard. Oh, it was the black gasket paste, which is very sticky. So this may not want to come off, we'll find out. What you don't want, you don't want to be jamming knives and stuff in there. I've got a scraper. General. This may end up being more difficult than I had first thought. Whoops. Still feels pretty stuck on. I think this is going to be a lot bigger job than I thought. Hmm. I'll have to pause for now because I've no idea what I'm going to do. You can see the cable there, definitely needs replacing. Well, that definitely didn't want to come off. The bearing feels all... Oh, that's good, isn't it? Like the top's come off the bearing. Oh dear. That's... That is not very good, and the bearing's got loads of shit in it. It feels okay, but... That's... It's got glued in there pretty good, then to take the top off the bearing, unless I'm uh, imagining it, but I don't think I am. So it will have to be 
I don't know, I need to have a think about it for a bit and then I'll decide what I'm going to do. Yeah, that is very unusual. That's a better angle to see the top of the bear at the inside of the bearing and then the top of the casing here with the almost brown and gold colour. That's the that's the, the top of the bearing. Strange.